he just he just did exactly what I predicted in my mm. heart. Like he's so intentional. If you look at the young man, he knows it's not about just management or record label. He knows what he wants. People ask me where I get all my energy from. From the stage to the studio and to my desk. I am the energy god. And you can be one too. You're listening to Adi Shokbe Live, the Afrobeat Podcast. Right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to a brand new edition of Adi Shopper Live, the official Afrobeats podcast here live at the Enish Media Studios in Covent Garden, Central London. This is where we're breaking down the hottest topics in the Afropop culture. Most times I'm joined by a special guest in the building to come and wing it up with me. As always, I appreciate all the support, the subscriptions, the likes, the sharing. Please keep subscribing. Let's keep our numbers going up. The bigger our platform gets, the better we're in position to support our people without waiting for anybody to support us. We appreciate it. Please keep sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Now, in the studio with me today is, this is probably the first conversation I've had on camera with this brother in over 13 years. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> this is an icon of the Afro beats genre. A superstar out of Nigeria. One of the most <laughs> consistent musicians of our generation. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> my brother, <laughs> Kenzie. Uh, <laughs> Nobody does better than him. You are the baddest in this game. Listen, bro. That introduction can make me spend all my money. <laughs> bro, nice it's true. Like, Thank you. You've been one of the most consistent performers and musicians in our culture. Thank and a lot you. of people wouldn't even have an idea how long... <laughs> You've been in this game. True, 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 true. Thank you so much. Bro. How long have you been in this game? Oh, well, this year is making me 25 years in the game. God damn it. Professionally. I don't want to count about when we started hustling on the street, but professionally from when I started putting out music on TV, this year makes it 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. What does he... First of all, anybody that's been around that long came through a talent competition initially, yep. was part of a duo, yep. then went solo and consistently reinventing yourself. Talk to me about always reinventing yourself and having to do something new to carry this energy on in this game. Yeah, well, um, the truth is, I'm that guy that likes to strive, that likes to be at the best of whatever I'm doing. Mm. So the drive and hunger is always coming from the inside. And each time I'm doing stuff, I always want to make sure I beat the next thing I'm doing and beat the one I'm even thinking of. So the hunger is just from the inside. That's the truth. And you can't be able to sustain this kind of game, mm. you know, without being focused and staying consistent. For mm. me, um, a lot of um, the people that does um, the same business... When they get a hit song, that's when they go to bed, mm. to sleep, to relax, to feel they've gotten there. No, that's when the journey started. That's when the work starts. Yeah, because everybody's looking at you. Everybody's, you're on the spotlight. They want to see the next thing. And the next thing is always a problem. Mm. Because when you're here, everybody has rated you here. The next thing they want you to be here. To go to the next <laughs> and level. And getting to this place, you know what it took you. So that means if you're smart, you, you need to work times two. Wow. To the next level. So I've always known that. And for those that have been following my journey, you can tell I've been rebranding. I remember there was a time during Limpopo, I was wearing a lot of um, rainbow colors. Yes. It Yellow, was intentional. Red. I wanted wow. people to talk about it. Because this industry, you need to spend money. You need to talk to people for publicity. So if there's anything you need to do for yourself to get publicity and to get attention, my brother and my sister, don't sleep on it. Do it. Do it. See portable. He tells you I blog myself. I laugh because that's what I do. Hmm. I always try to make sure I create something for you to talk about without being controversial, without Absolutely. being negative, you know, being negative about it. So for me, I'm always trying to make sure I'm, I'm in the news. I'm always trying to make sure, you know, the brand and the name Casey doesn't go down. And it's not just about the music. 
for you to sustain this long, trust me, it's not about the music. You need to mm. sell other things. You need to sell the brand. You need to sell yourself. When I did Oja Piano, you know, I thought of it. I'm like, I've been around for a while. Can I just cover my face? Mm. Wear a mask. And I called up my uh, video director. I'm like, listen, this video, I don't want anybody's face to show in the video, including me. I want everybody to be on my face. guy screamed. Comfort. He was like, who's speaking to you? How did you get this idea? I'm like, that's how I'm thinking. Like, I think even when I'm sleeping. Wow. So when I did the video, I saw it. I was laughing. I was like, this is different. And my fans that have been following me for the past 25 years, when they saw that piece, they were like, no, this is not our KC. Like, this is they new, adjusted. This like, is okay, improved. this is a new KC. You know, I'm wearing dreadlocks now. I wasn't wearing it like a couple of years ago. So you need to keep reinventing yourself, rebranding yourself. Keep you just like servicing your customer. Check out the big brands you see today. After three, four, five years, they, they have rebrand to their logo. That's what you are. You are a brand. Facts. So don't sit down in one place and do one thing. So I thank God for always giving me ideas. And one thing again is when you get ideas, you don't need to sleep on it too much or talk about it too much. When you start asking Get questions, to, do it. To and if do you do fail, it. you stand up and do another one. Mm. It's better for you to fail. You learn when you fail. Facts. Because I've had a lot of bad times, bad records. And in the midst of getting bad records, then you know the mistakes. You know what they don't like and you know what they like and you keep working. So that's my energy. I don't, look, the biggest trend I get is when people criticize what I do. Wow. That's my biggest it energy. It motivates you. If they stop criticizing me, I'll go, I think I'll go down. Wow. I love when people tell me he's whack. I love it. I love when you tell me he doesn't know how to do it. I love it. It makes me want to prove to you. That I can. That I can. And that's my strength. So I'm one of those artists that were built that way. You know, the fans, the industry, they dealt with me. <clears throat> they dealt with me, trust me. The industry, in quote. My fans, I have loyal fans. And they know me. And they love me. I know them. Right. But... You know when you're successful, Media a lot of people critics. want you down. When you're successful, get it. No matter the business you do, when you're successful, that's Facts. when everybody wants you down. They, they want you off of that position. Yes, because they want to be there. If you say something, they criticize it. If you say good or bad, they criticize. That's why the evil people say, oh, Sunday or Wendy. Mm. You sweet some people, you know sweet some people. You understand? So don't care about what they say. So for me, I don't care. If you check my life, I don't come back and tell anybody. Where did that come from? Was it part of your upbringing? What in your upbringing created such a strong, resilient character? Okay, I think um, I'll give that credit to my father. Mm. My father was a DJ, a record seller. Right, so I grew up in the home where my father was selling records. So name it, all the old artists, you know, I know all of them. I was selling their records. When I was like five, six, I was in my father's record store. When I was in like secondary school, I was already handling a full record store, going for parties to play for parties, me and wow. E-Money. No so, way. Yeah, we were DJs. So I heard and listened to a lot of big records. I saw big artists going up and going down. Hmm. I was studying it, not knowing I was going into music. I saw a lot. So I saw the fame of some artists going this way and two seconds they disappear. I studied the other ones that are very consistent. People like King Sonia, I studied hmm. them. You need to improve your craft, your act every other day because somebody that booked you yesterday, if you want him to book you tomorrow, you need to change something. You need to add, add something. a little bit of value. You must add a value for him to call you again or how to call you again. So I learned all this in that process. And when I found myself in the game, I was like, okay, I need to sustain this. And I, I, I'm grateful to God that the strength, life, and wisdom to think. And one thing, I everybody that knows me, my team, they know this man doesn't take no for an answer. If I want anything, I go for it. If I don't get it, I'll keep striving till I get it. So my father gave me that platform that shaped me. And also one big strength I have most people don't know is the ear for a hit song. Mm. And that's why I'm able to sustain to this level. You know, there's ability to record a song, but do you know if it's going to be a hit? That's why for the past 25 years, I've been relevant. No time I disappeared in the industry. I've been consistent for the past 25 years. I can do 10 records. One must work. 
And like when I, say, when I mean one will work, everybody must dance to that we'll one. Enjoy it. Yes. And when the one one record works, that can keep you for another five years. <laughs> so having consistent for it's the past twenty five years. Yes, you need to study it. And you need to tell yourself the truth. When you don't have it, you know. When you have it, you should also know. You know, so for me, I'm that man that likes to pay attention to myself, my work. I don't care what you say because if I want to listen to what people say about me, I would have been discouraged. I would have been doing something else. But each time they tell me I can't, that's when I want to do it. That's when I want to get better. And I want to thank all of them for criticizing me. You know, <laughs> you wanna, I thank you guys. You want to say thank you. <laughs> I want to say thank the, you to my haters. You want to say thank you, you know, to the haters. <laughs> yeah, for helping me get to this level. <laughs> Please don't stop hating. Now, because when you stop, I'm going. One of the, I like the way we started this conversation because it's giving me an idea of how I want to speak to you. True. Um, in a completely different way. Where you're asking questions, no. I want to talk about specific things. Now we've spoken about your resilience. Yeah and how you've maintained the industry for this long. Now, let's talk about your culture, your Igbo heritage. Uh. Talk to me about that. You've been consistent as well yes. in always identifying, not only as a person, but also with your music. Mm -hmm. And you've carried that on. It led you to the, mm -hmm. you know, to the praise Mm -hmm. album that mm -hmm. became one of the most successful things for you as sure. well in the sure. last 10 years. Sure. Talk to me about your Igbo heritage and that culture, deciding to go back home to hold your, your yeah. festival. Yeah. Talk to me about all these things. Yeah, I think, I think um, like I said, I also put, I remember my father, you know, selling those records then. I heard a lot of those, my cultural songs, mm -hmm. and they sank into me a lot. Me and my brother, we love local music. Despite the fact we're kind of posh out there in Lagos, mm. we always like to go back to the East, you know what I mean? So um, I was doing Afrobeat, and I remember in 2017, I told myself, I'm like, no, I need to embrace my culture. A lot of people thought I, I was from Cross River or Aqua Bomb mm. because my partner, the Press, we're always doing a lot of uh, Calabar songs, songs and all that. We we're born and raised in Lagos, so nobody knew where we're coming from. So it was 2017, I told myself, like, hey, High life music is so sweet. It's Facts. like Makosa music. Facts. So sweet, so melodious, but we haven't tapped a lot out of it. And big shout out to Flavor. Big shout out to Flavor. The king. Yeah. Ijele. Wah. That nigga Wah. plays with that shit. Like he plays that song like no, he's crazy. effortlessly. So I watch him. I'm like, I admire what he was doing. I'm like, oh, that's good. Fino came in. He was doing a lot of rap with Ebo and all that. Mm. You know, they were representing the culture. And I felt like, oh, that, that genre of music is not saturated. There's not a lot of people there. I think I can fit in and do something. And I woke up one morning. I went to a Nicha Head Bridge. I put up a seat in the middle of the road. I took a picture over, over the Head Bridge. I was sending the picture. Wow. And I was like, yeah, the king is here. No <laughs> and way. I, yeah, I did a, an album called Eastern Conference. And that was when the journey for me into that genre of music started. 2017, 2018. I kept on pushing. In less than three, four years, I got my sports there, got the attention, and I started doing a lot to project that brand. And the fire is still burning inside to promote my heritage. And each time I'm recording or I'm in the studio, I'm thinking of, you know, something to put. Even when I was doing pullover. Yes. You know, if in me, they make me the follow your lane. Get that Igbo lane. melody must Chai. come. It's original. I like how you, you did. understand? You did. So I always want to infuse if my dialect in it. You know, and um, when I started it, I became so comfortable and happy with it. And I saw that my people, the Igbos, were they embracing it. You they, yeah, they love it. My fan base grew more. Hmm. I'm like, no, I've been sleeping. So um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just starting with that culture because there's mm. a lot, because we don't have a lot of us championing that. But this time around, I'm also going to put my hands down to embrace some people. There's this boy, Anya Dons, I brought from the East also. And mm. now he's very big in the East, like very, very big. Everybody knows him. He's doing so well. I'm going to do a lot of that more to support that genre of music. I like that. You know, like to that. see how we can take it there because... I'm not going to be here forever, you know? Mm. And I think when I leave, I want to see some people speak about me and say, okay, he put us on, on this genre of music, you know? I like the fact that you talked about that. Over the last, I was actually speaking to my brother today, Dono, shout out, Lifestyle, Yo, Dono. Dono, you my know, guy. That's my brother. And we're just catching up for like 45 minutes over lunch. 
And he was saying, you know, um, you know, maybe we need to speak to Casey and look at some of the new acts that you can pull up. And I said, that means you haven't done your research. <laughs> Casey been doing this. Sure. You're responsible for Inyanya coming sure. to Lagos, which Definitely. I just found out. Definitely. That you bought his first plane Flight ticket. ticket. He stayed with you for yeah, six for years, years yeah. in Lagos. For real. Living with you. For real. I had no idea. Ubi Franklin <laughs> told me that. So it wasn't even you. Yeah, I didn't say it. I don't talk about it. You <laughs> responsible yeah. for Skibby. Definitely. In this game. Definitely. Skippy doesn't play with that. Still Definitely. talks to me about that till today. Okay, now let me shock you. When I was recording on your piano, I was in the studio with Skippy. We recorded it together. In fact, Skippy was part of, he's a co-writer. We wrote down your piano verse together. No way. Yes, yeah, Skippy was in the studio. And like, we, we are in the studio every day. He comes to my studio. I go to him. We're still like father and son, like brother and brother. We don't we don't play with each other. He told you me know, that. so he came into the system, you know, through that platform. When I saw him, I was like, I love this guy. I would do anything. Even when he wasn't popping, even when he was down, I always tell him, I say, Skibby, look into my eyes. You're gonna blow. I don't know when, I don't know how, but you're a star. Skibby doesn't play with it. So that gave him a lot of confidence. So I'm I'm that guy that I like to, if I see it, I know. Like, oh, this person can get it. I will support. The thing is, there's been a lot of people like that. Like, Skibby came to me recently. That's another brother of mine. And he told me that your relationship is still so good that there were some times when you came to his house and he told you to stay over. And he asked you to sleep in his room whilst he was sleeping in the living room. Yeah. And that you refused. You said, no, how can you come to a big man's house now? And and he refused yeah. that there was no way you were sleeping in the guest room or whatever. True. You were going to sleep. 100%. Yeah. 100%. That's how we are. He said that to me. That's and how when we... you hear stuff like that, so I told Donald that you've been doing that. You've done that for a lot of people. Even the Oja Piano you mentioned, you yeah. had situations where you introduced the artist that was on the Oja yeah. To the rest of the world. Yeah. But then you get into situations where some people will now criticize and say, oh, I wasn't treated well. Yeah. I saw Japiano where you had to respond to that publicly. Yeah. To say, I gave you this. I bought you this. Yeah. I yeah. did this for you. It's X sad. My, it's what's sad. that like? So, so for me, it's sad. I think like what I said earlier, when you're up here, people want to bring you down. Yes. So for me, I don't even blame some of those guys in as much as they have their quarter to gain in the, in, to share in the blame. But it's the fans out there. They always want to... See that negative side. Yes, they look for a negative thing. So they never saw Japiano coming. And when it came, it was big. And why will it come from Casey? Hmm. Why? Why Casey? But yeah, because Casey is working, because Casey is thinking I was out sleeping. of the box. Yeah. So they were the ones trying to poison Instigate. the hearts of those guys. Right. These guys came for a party. I was performing. I, I, get, I got them to perform. They charged 30000 to blow a job. They never knew they were going to the studio. That's my idea. That's what I've been thinking for the past three years. I can show you some things on my phone. I've, I've sent different producers the idea. But they, they couldn't, they couldn't do, do, it. do it. They said they can't until I found a producer that can do it. So those guys didn't know they were going to the studio. I took them to the studio. I was like, oh, I'm taking you guys to the studio. I want to do something. They don't know what they were going to do. We got there. I said, okay, just do this. Producer, give them empty space. Let them, Skibby was there. And Skibby even told me, was like, ah, is this going to work? I'm like, let's try it. If it work, if it doesn't, we'll throw it out. And these boys started blowing the Oja. Then there was goosebumps all over everybody in the studio. Mm. We started screaming. And we placed it on the beat. It was over. We danced for almost one week before we even recorded our vocal. Those boys didn't know where they were. The guy that was doing the chant, I was the one that said, okay, just record this guy. Let him just do all those uh, Igbo. Mm. What was in my head was just to project the Igbo culture. Damn. Now when the song came out, their life changed. Friends and family came in. Oh, they are ripping you guys off. If you check the interview, the guy said I've made over... 10 billion. <laughs> so that's dumb. You know, even YouTube, I don't know if they make 10 billion in, for in one week. That's what, in less than one week forget. or two weeks, they started fighting me. People started telling them stuff, telling them they should do this, they should sue me, they should. So the young boys started, 
you know, responding to what people were telling mm. them. And you say you do this for 30000 I pay you 300000 How ex do you want me to give you my wife or give you my children? When we didn't even know that the song was going to We didn't even know it was going to blow. Now, I already had some bookings in America. I remember you. Yeah, to before yeah. Japan recorded. Yes. And immediately I released it. I had to go and do my job. I had to perform in a wedding and parties they booked me for. Then I traveled. They started dragging me that, oh, I'm now flying abroad alone without <laughs> taking them. How? I won't take you. Go to my papa embassy. Mm. I will just get a visa in one week and two weeks <laughs> and take you to America. You know, people started instigating. And I came out to one of the interviews on BBC Ebo. I yeah. said it and I explained. I said, people should stop creating problems when there is no problem. Me, I blame those boys, but the main, the bigger problem is the fans because they dealt with my other boy, Annie Dons. They were going to him. They're like, Casey's performing your songs in every show he goes to. That's hey, the normal. If you are I'm even over. helping him to promote his song. He no. doesn't have the platform. I tell people nowadays, when you do a song with someone like a burner boy or a whiskey, your prayer <laughs> is that he performs they perform a verse it. of it. <laughs> because that's promoting your Facts. song. 1,000%. So, but the other guy understood 1, it. When people were coming to him, telling him that, he understood. He was like, you guys should leave me. When were, where were you people when Casey paid for my video? Two music videos. Shot the video, promoted the song. And today the guy is helping other artists, putting other, signing other people in less than four years. Mm. So me, I understand the system. I never got upset. Why I came out to explain about this last one was because I have grown kids now. Mm. They went to school and they came back and Social they asked me, media. why am I not paying these guys oh why didn't i God. pay these guys that broke me down because what i was impacting in my kids and what i teach them is moral and how to be straightforward and how to so they coming back to ask me that i'm not paying somebody who made me feel so bad and i had to respond to that what what about harry's songs harry is a different one because he, you've had this back and forth for a long time sometimes you be cool he apologize other times he just comes up again. I saw recently again. Harry just went. Uh, that's my brother as well. True. But how? What is the medium for Harry songs? You want to bring this in for us? I think yeah, we've got in. we've got some come in. some <laughs> chop chop here. Ah, yes, amazing! You know some suya and some okay. you know water. Yeah, okay. shout out to Enish uh, restaurants in Covent Garden. Thank nice. you very much, my brother. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Thank you. Let me help you with that. Thank you. So nice. let's get back to it. As, as I said, we are any media studios yeah. in Covent Garden. Harry, songs, how do we address this situation? It seems like it goes away for a while. It comes back again. Yeah, well, the truth is, um, I think I've never, ever, ever addressed this issue. Hmm. I have never spoken about it. Publicly. I always stay away from it. Absolutely. If you ask me that question, I either leave your studio yeah. or I'll tell you I don't want to talk about I it. I know. Yeah, because I don't think it's too necessary, but I'll talk about it now Yeah. because we are all grown now. This is about eight years. Facts. We went our separate ways. You know, you write the best song. You say you were writing all my songs, but he was in the village when I won Star Quest. Mm. The village with the grandma, I went through a talent hunt. I won the contest. Now you write these songs. I did three albums with Kenny's music. Who wrote the songs? Mm, as, as Casey <laughs> as Press. As Casey Press. I did a lot my, on myself. And you coming to discredit me because you had the privilege to walk around me or stay under my umbrella, I felt like it wasn't necessary for me to explain. Time would tell. Now, Fact. you left. Eight years ago. Eight years after. I'm still popping. <laughs> Even Skibi made so many hits. My brother, identify one of the hits you left, you done after you left Five Star. Your biggest hit is Reggae Blues, recorded by still... me and Olamide. Mm. I took the song to Olamide. He doesn't have access to Olamide. Olamide did the verse. We all put energy in Yaya. I put on Inyaya on the song also. And the song became what it is. That's his biggest record. And you're the best writer in the world. Can you, your ink finish, write another one. And you keep coming back. The problem is that I think young man is sick in his prayers. He's fighting with a wife today. Mm. He's fighting with Harrison, uh, with, um, what's his name? So, 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 tomorrow. He's fighting with Skibiness tomorrow. That tells you something. So for me, he has a five-year contract running with Five Star Music, still on as we speak. But you never dragged that? No. He has a criminal case running now 
It's like if I want to bring it back away, forging my signature, my brother's signature, and collecting money from a client. That's a criminal case I have still pending. But I never talked about all this. I don't want to talk about it because I know him. I love him so much as a brother. But there's a problem. I think there's a problem somewhere. Mm, mm. This is not trying to disrespect anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think there's a problem. Let's, we are all human. Some people are very talented or something, but they might have a problem. Yeah. We need to pray for him. Mm. Jokes apart. We need to pray for him. I don't want to see anybody down. I don't want to see anybody fall. I don't wish anybody evil. I like to move on my own. But what I think is there is a problem and it needs God's intervention. One person can't be fighting with everybody. Mm. You fight today, you say you're sorry. Tomorrow, next tomorrow, you're fighting. You wake up again, you say there's a problem. That needs to be addressed. Yes. And this same person came out and told the public that his mother and his father are siblings. By himself. My people, there's a problem. So it's not about me now. It's mm. not about, we need to pray. Mm. The way we pray for Nigeria, we need to pray for him. Maybe God will solve it. Because me, I cannot solve the problem. Mm. Mm. I'm busy trying to make sure Try. they will nominate me for Grammy or something. <laughs> God. Now, I'm listen, trying. let's move on. You and I have kept a strong relationship for over a decade. We are constantly in communication at pivotal times of your career always exchanging ideas. You sent me the record you had done with Wizkid at the time when Wizkid had the fever. We, yeah. you, we've been... And last year, you came to London, you know, and I had invited you out. Let's sure. go and watch the games with yeah. the London Lions. Yeah. You spent the evening with myself and Smaid, and then you came the next day, and yeah. we spent hours together. Yeah. And I remember during that conversation, I stressed the importance of identity mm. in your music mm. um, with the Igbo culture, with the roots of our music, because I felt a lot of people in the game were very, in a way, in the search for more palatable African songs. Mm. We were doing sounds and this, this, and we had a deep conversation. You went back to Lagos. You said you were going to take it on board. Um, and the next record you sent to me was on your piano. True that. You listen. True that. You listen. I must say, I'm, I must say that that meeting did a lot for me because I heard you and uh, Smade saying a lot. We we're walking after the game to the car. Yeah. You guys were saying a lot and you were like sharpening my my sword because mm. I was born in before I came. Like mm. I need transformation. I need to, a new level. And that was when I, I dropped the record with Skibi Doom Doom. Yeah. And I went back with that fire. And all we were saying that day was identity, identity. Just can you just create something different? And when I went back, God just made it, you know, happen easy. Mm. And I just found that thing and boom, it was a different story. And when I sent you the record too, you were like, what God, are you doing? Come to London. We're Let's gone. You know, I, I and, felt it. We're gone. And that record did wonders. Like hmm. I dropped that record in less than 24 hours. It was doing 120,000 videos on TikTok. That was when it became a problem. Like even the TikTok guys, like they were like, "Where is Casey? Like, what did you do? You have to move. What do you do for this Where one? Where do you go carry? Then the next day, we're doing 120,000 videos in Nese, organic. Like, I did 120,000 videos every day for like seven days. Straight. Never dropped. Everybody was jumping on it, making vid content with it, from the movie industry to footballers to across football the players, world. To everything. Everybody. I was so excited. Like, I, th I was like, okay. The only thing that can stop a man is himself. Hmm. When you lose hope, mm. when you discredit yourself, when you listen that you can't do it. You know, when you guys said those things to me, you guys told me some things about Bernard. Hmm. You said, oh, Bernard told you guys also he has a performance. He knows he can perform. That's, and that any day he, he gets a chance to perform to deliver. the world, he will deliver. And, and today it. he's the biggest performer. In the world. In the world, trust me. Trust me. He's the biggest performer. So when you guys are saying all those things, I'm, I, also, I also have my own part inside of me, and I want the world to see my energy. And when I went back home, I didn't sleep. 
I, I had to rebuild my studio, change everything, you know, enhance my band members. Hmm. Brought, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing a lot, even till tomorrow. So the cases you're seeing today, I promise you in the next six months is different. And for those that have been booking me for gigs, don't play. If I come to your your show, don't play. No, you must dance till I leave. Don't play, bro. <laughs> like I'm bragging on it. Listen, don't play. Don't play him, man. If you want to try me, pay me. Don't pay me. Book me after performance. You pay me. Even you. I like. I know how many people that have booked me, and they'll be like, when they were arguing for the price, they'll be like, it's too much. I'm like, that's what it's I when do. When the hits come, when, that I when finish, people know, they come. They'll be like, now I understand why you were. Do, when those you know, hits, like I said to you, when you popped up for. You know, Rema in London. Oh, yeah. And the hits went back to back. Yeah. A lot of people, people got up. They were screaming. But I want to talk about your relationship with Rema. You've said it a couple of times. Yeah. But I want you to say it here on the Afrobeats podcast. The respect that the brother shows for you as a young man. 23 years old. Mm. A lot of times, those people coming into the game, they don't really look at, the OGs that mm. much, unless you are in touching dust distance with him. True. But Rema is a different kind of cat. He True talks that. about you differently. True that. And he shows it publicly. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that young man? Well, I think, I think um, first of all, I'll give big shout out to him. Talented young man, intentional, mm. focus, and he knows what he wants. Now, there was an interview I was doing and they were asking me among the young boys, who and who am I thinking that's going to be there, blah, blah. And I was like, the first person I mentioned was Rema. I was like, Rema, Oxlade. Mm. You know, I, was, I think I also mentioned Ruga. I mentioned about yeah. four names. And at the end of the day, Rema didn't, he just, he just did exactly what I predicted in my mm. heart. Like, He's so intentional. If you look at the young man, you know it's not about just management or record label. He knows what he wants, you know, and he's so respectful. Like when I'm conversing with him one on one, no pretense. Mm. You know, there's a difference between when you're minding your business and you're proud. He's not a proud guy. He's intentional guy. He likes to keep it cool, and I love and respect him for that. When I met him in Abuja a couple of years ago, he, he came to me, he was like, do you know when I was trying to take a picture with you a long time ago, the bouncers were trying to push me and you stopped everybody. You were like, come on, you took a picture with me that that picture inspired him. I was like, wow. wow. I was already in love with him, like his movement and his career. I was always posting him on my snap. I never knew I even contacted <laughs> with him way back. I didn't know. So sometimes I think it's good to be good. Some of the OGs also have their problems. Mm. Trust me. Some of the OGs, they have the problems. You were, you were a superstar yesterday. There's a new star today. You need to respect that. And you have to be humble. You have to respect it. You have <laughs> to show doesn't love. play football right now. What Drogba will have is respect. And when Drogba see the rainy stars today. He saw Victor Osimhen. Yes, he went to embrace him. He embrace, that's, that's what I'm talking about. As an OG. Yeah, when you're OG, embrace you need the young to, you guys. need to leave. You need to you know, portray that, you know, respect Love also and respect. to the young ones. Facts. So when you don't give them that, how do you expect them to give you back? I like you that. know, some of the young ones get to the OGs, maybe before they even get, OG is trying to tell you he just bought Rolls Royce and he bought house in Banana. What do you want the young boy to tell you? They're going to leave you now. Mm. Go find their mates. Don't oppress, oppress them, you know, with stuff you, they already know you have or mm. the level they already know you are. Don't, you don't need to oppress them. When I meet some of these guys, I come down as if I'm nobody. I play with them. I rap with them. Ask any of them that you know that I've been across with or stayed around. I, I even see, I even want to make them feel so big and, you know, place them there. Why? It's their time. Absolutely. You need to respect their time. There's time for everybody. There's time for everything. And for me, I'm not looking for a hit song. I just want to be consistent. Career has been built and already. Push my career till the day I rest. That's it. So I'm not in competition with the younger ones, and I don't think they have to be in competition with me. Facts. If I need anything from them, I'll I'll ask for it. Facts. If I need to beg for it, I'll beg for it. Humility. Like right now, they have big numbers. When we started this journey, we 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 drive from Ajegunle to Alagbadu to, <laughs> to go and submit our music and AIT. Mm. We drive from Ajegunle to VI to NTA to submit our project. 
we go to rape power around Aja, uh, Leki, inside Watasef. We, we go halfway, we trek some and do all that. But today, these kids can from the on phone. their phone and you know reach the world. And they're hitting numbers. The catalogs right now, you can count numbers online. Then you can't count numbers. So when we did our own, it was like analog system. Facts. You were building bridges. And, yeah. And before I came into the system, there were bigger people like me, like uh, behind me, like Blackie, and, you know, Jeez. Daniel Wilson, name them. Cheers. Oris Williki. Oris Williki. Hey. They were doing big things. They were locking down stadiums in Facts. Nigeria. Facts. Right? Put a show in Nigeria right now in the stadium and tell me the artists that will sell it out in Nigeria. Hmm. Then those artists then sell out stadiums in every state. They were moving around. Stadiums or nothing. Do you understand? So eras come, Junior and Pretty, they Junior did their Pretty. own Daddy Show Key. You know, when we came in, we were the new sensation. We were doing everything. I was traveling. Immediately I came into the industry. I came to London 20-something years ago. Yeah. US. I was traveling, like doing my stuff. These guys now, the world is listening to Afrobeat. It's your time. They will enjoy it. Facts. But myself, I want to enjoy part of it. That's why I'm not sleeping. <laughs> and if I need to beg them or collect from them to get to my journey, my brother, Facts. I will do it too. Humility. Yes. It stops nothing. It takes nothing away from me. So my own is, Rema, God will bless you hmm. for the platform. Some people will be like, why? You know, will I give him the platform? The way he introduced me in Canada, in Toronto. Emotional. I was, I almost wanted to, I'm like, wow, this is big respect. And immediately the fans transferred they the love to me. They convert. And my phone was on fire when I left the stage. Like they were tagging me, messaging me. All the fans were like, oh my God, they don't know me. They're white people. But they started following me. My because numbers Rema went up. Because Rema said, this guy yes. is the guy. So imagine if I was waiting for Rema to call me to come for his show. I asked for, for myself to be there. I told him I want to be there. I told his team I want to be there. And they were like, okay, you can come. So imagine if I didn't go for that. The new fan base I got from there. I, that that added blessed to me. Ojad Piano yeah, as well. I, maybe I won't see them. And now my demand is heavy. I'm hmm. talking to almost four, five different promoters. Hmm. Even in London, different promoters trying to have my concert done. You know, so for me, I think you need to keep the pride low, keep it down. Sometimes when you think too much of yourself, you know, go, don't know, say, don't forget, say, nobody, they see you now, only you did there. Sometimes, only you go, did there. You go, say, you still did there. Sometimes, calm down. Just relax. Relax yourself. Don't be too much in there or don't be feeling too much of yourself. I know my level. I know what I have. I know how much in my bank. You don't need to force it. I don't need to push. I don't need to tell you how much I have. Facts. I don't know. If you know, you know. If you don't know, it's none of your business. Before you come up for him, you just find a couple hundred dollars. Come on, I can share that. So, you understand? Hey, continue. Hey. <laughs> so, for me, for me, I think the call show has grown so hmm. big. And big shout out to Rema, one of the best, uh, first artists to do billion streams. You know what I mean? That, that boy. That you boy. Know. That boy. Don't play. Don't play. <laughs> that boy. Don't play. Crazy. <laughs> don't play. Intentional. Yes. He has, if you look at his music, look at his catalogs, look at his career, even before he got into the industry, he loves act. Sweet. He loves act. He so it's in his music, in his, it's in his video. Sometimes when some people try to criticize some things, go and check. Check the background. Yes. Don't misunderstand Go and, stuff. Know, Go and know what you're talking about. Why you want to talk. Is first. Don't because, just see something and start because talking. Because people are, a lot of people are new artists. They're yes. new fans. Yeah. So when they come in, and they're like, what's this? First of all, go and research. Yeah, research. First. If you love that person, research. <laughs> then when you come back, you can talk. So big shout out to him. Big love for him. You you have a, a dope record with another artist that I love, uh, my brother Oxlade. That's Whoa. another fantastic shout, shout out to Oxlade boy. as well. Two things before we wrap up. One, which is very important, is you've dropped, you've got Oja Piano going crazy. You have the record with Skibi. You have the record with Tenny. You have the record with Oxlade. Are we getting a project this year? Is there a title to it? And when can we expect that? Yeah, okay. Um, I've been working and... Um... I'm in London now. I'm still working, yeah. trying to get some record done. I think a project will be ready for April. Okay. I'm looking at April to drop the project by the grace of God. And um, there will be a lot of collaborations. Yeah. Uh, some have been done already. 
Uh, I'm that guy. I don't like to talk too much. I just like to get to work or do what I have to do. And I also don't wait for anybody, you know. I don't nah. need to. Most of my big records are the records I did alone. Facts. You understand? So I'm not one of those artists that depend on anybody. But it's good to collaborate. It's good to mix up. If you're ready to mix up with Let's me, go. I'm ready to mix up if with you. Know, if you're not ready, no problem. Move. The only thing I know is I have God. Facts. And one with God is with everybody. Facts. With majority. So Facts. that's who I have. But I think... I'm going to be mixing up with a lot of artists to do some collaborations. You guys should look out for that. But the project is going to be ready for April. No title yet. But the title in my head um, um, is something people don't know about me. I also want to talk about. So I feel to name the project Versatile or mm. Mr. Versatile. Because I'm that guy that is so versatile. If you write a rap for me... I can do a rap song. If you write an R&B song for me, I can do it. I can. I did all that. Look, I have a, I have a Fuji song with Olamide. I did long ago in my career. I have gospel song. I did yep. a gospel song then dance for for club for strip clubs. Uh, you know, and when I was doing it, some gospel artists that were my friends were like, "He just did it like you were the only one that can deliver it like this." Like mm. even God was feeling it. You understand? So I'm that versatile. Why? Because of that music background my father gave me. So I listen to a Your whole taste. lot of jam jam in my head. So, you know, when you're very young, your brain absorbs a lot of Absolutely. So I absorbed a lot of so things growing up. Sitting there. Yeah, so if you give me any genre, they it chop out. Into it. You know, so I'm looking at naming my project Mr. Versatile or Versatile. I don't know what my team you're would say. You're still working on that. Yeah, but I'm still working on what the title will be. And finally, your relationship with your brother has been consistent. <laughs> yeah. E money <laughs> consistent true that the bond is clear to see true that as briefly as you can talk to me about that bond because it's strong yeah uh okay so that's something very special and precious to me i don't play with mm. my relationship with my brother you know it's not one-sided it's both ways and I want to be give big shout out to my parents for making us, you know, you know, training us that way. And aside from them, I grew up loving my brother so much and he gave me back same love. Mm. I'm older than him and the respect is mutual we give to ourselves. And we found that a lot of people across the world have united themselves and family because of me and my brother. A lot of our tribe people, Igbo, I met some Bini people in the, uh, in uh, Italy, and they're like, do you know, say, you know, say now because of you and your brother, he money, make me and my younger brother settle. He took my money while giving me a built house for me now. <laughs> Since that time, almost 10 years now, I know they talked to But when I see you now, yeah, the way you move, when I, as, as I can't call my brother, man, I know they see these people. Mm. So those things we're doing, we don't know that it was shaping in a lot of homes you know, rebuilding a lot of broken relationship in homes. People started embracing themselves. And we keep getting this testimony on our DMs and phones. And we are not forcing it. We are not pretending this Natural. is who we are. That's like, I was on the phone with Imani when you were talking to me all the time. Facts. He was in my ear, my airport. We were talk, we talk almost every time. Even if I'm in the hole, I will talk to my brother, except there's no network. You know, so the love is organic, is original, and we respect ourselves. Hmm. And one thing for you to do to sustain love and relationship like that is everybody respecting themselves. Don't cross boundaries. <laughs> Don't, you know, bridge gaps that, you know, that can spoil the relationship. Growing up, because if you want to say hi to a girl, he's over. That girl can never see my eye. Do you understand what it is? Mm. Like in the I one girl or the I the girl, I, I never ever talk to her. I notice her. I will never go there. That's respect. Yeah. That's love. Like, okay, my brother cannot, if, I, if I'm in danger now, he would do everything to make sure I'm out of that danger, whether it's financial, whether it's anything. And I do the same. And I have my own business going on, making my own money. He has his own going on. We put forces together. Mm. We build our empire. And today, see, I'm a five-star. Yeah, president and vice president, me and my brother. You understand? We built this thing together and big shout out to him. And I don't need to speak too much. The world already knows Facts. the love about me and Facts. him and they know the way it is. And I'm telling you today that it's so real and organic that sometimes both of us go to ask ourselves, who will first leave this world, Seth? 
you know, because we're all going to die auntie, one day. Absolutely. And because you guys we'll just... start crying. We'll start being sad like, <laughs> how is the other person going to feel? <laughs> don't, how is the other guy? Don't, don't go there. But don't go we know we're not dying anytime Facts. soon. We there's are going to, to be 150. And there's work you know, to do. So I'm, I just said that part to let absolutely. you know how much passion we have for each other. Like, we can't stay without each other. And our wives, they're doing a great job because some women will come in and destroy that. You know, so big shout out to them that we, we're married. Even our kids, they know how much we love ourselves and they're doing the same. They're siblings. Yeah, yeah, they know they're doing the same. They love themselves so much. So I think we've played a lot of role in trying to shape in some homes and build back some brotherhood and sisterhood that, are, that have been broken and... God used us to do that. I'm saying this because people are not coming to our church to give testimony. We get this testimony on our phone every day. And that's the most important thing. You know, and that thing. gives us a lot of joy also. Thank you, man. Listen, my brother, as always, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. Like I said, the last time we had a proper sit down was probably close to a decade ago. Yeah. But we're always constantly talking. We're talking anyway, on the phone every, every time. Every day. Every time. So, and before I leave, I must say something. <laughs> yes. Very dear to me. Very important. Um. I want to talk about somebody, mm. and he's in London also. Yes. This guy has done so well for the culture. He has done so great. And I knew him when he was hustling, trying to, he just loved the culture. And today, the culture is this big, and I'm happy they are still celebrating him. Mm. And he's still celebrating the culture. He's somebody that lo has love for every artist. And that person is him. <laughs> At De Chopin, God bless you. I'm not you, saying this to impress you. You've done so well. Back home, everybody come to I your page. It, Even if they're not right to comment and say, everybody come to your page to see. It, because the way you promote the culture, you do it with love, with so much confidence, with so much passion, and we connect from it. Appreciate it makes it, some of us also want to do more. So God will bless you for Amen, what you're doing. Brother. Don't stop doing it. Amen, Yesterday brother. I was out with you. You were introducing me to a lot of big players in the game. You know, a lot of things will be happening soon. Facts. And I know if Inyaya comes in here tomorrow same. or uh, Alabaja comes same here, you will do the same thing. Same so God will bless you for Amen, not discriminating, Amen, for showing brother. the cultural love. We celebrate you. Thank like you, Whiskey brother. call you CNN, Afrobeat <laughs> CNN. I call you Afrobeat <laughs> CNN. God bless you, my brother. I appreciate God bless it. You. I appreciate it, brother. And on that note, until next time, this has been the Afrobeat Podcast. I'm Adi Shopoel Ajide. The legend, Kissy! Shout out. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother.